Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled, Esau is not the so-called white man. That is, Esau is not the so-called white man. My objective in this lesson is not to reveal the identity of the Edomites or descendants of Esau today. It is simply to thoroughly demonstrate that Esau is not the so-called white man. This does not mean that the so-called white man will not be punished for the atrocities he continues to commit against the children of Israel to this very day. There are biblical prophecies that show that they are the enemies of the Most High and his people and that every last one of them will be destroyed. However, they are definitely not the descendants of Esau. To learn the biblical identity of the so-called white man, along with the total annihilation that the Most High has in store for them, please listen to my teaching entitled, Gentiles and the Children of Lucifer. That is, Gentiles and the Children of Lucifer. I am fully aware that there are Israelites who have already concluded that Esau is the so-called white man and nothing will change their mind. This teaching is not for those people. This is for those who have a genuine desire to learn the truth about this controversial doctrine. In this teaching, I will answer the following questions. 1. Why do so many Israelites believe that Esau is a so-called white man? 2. Can we prove precept upon precept that Esau is the so-called white man? And 3. What is the quickest way to prove that Esau is not the so-called white man? Question number 1. Why do so many Israelites believe that Esau is a so-called white man? A few years ago, when I read the book of Joshua, it suggested that Esau, also known as Edom, mixed with Rome and became the so-called white man. Since then, I have learned that this is a lie that is nowhere to be found in the Holy Scriptures, which Christians call the Old Testament. Yet many Israelites believe this lie. If we are serious about finding answers to biblical questions, such as the identity of the Edomites or children of Esau today, we must first reject fraudulent books that seek to lead us away from the truth. For evidence that the so-called books of Joshua, Jubilees, and Enoch were designed to deceive the children of Israel, please listen to my teaching entitled, The False Books Leading Israel Astray. That is, The False Books Leading Israel Astray. The book of 2 Esdras, which is found in the 1611 King James Version of the Christian Bible, also perpetuates the lie of Esau being the so-called white man. In 2 Esdras chapter 6 verse 9, that 2 Esdras chapter 6 verse 9, it reads thus, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is is the beginning of it that followeth. Anyone who understands the Holy Scriptures can easily see that we are living in the last days. Therefore, if you accept the book of 2 Esdras and it says that Esau is the end of the world, it naturally follows that whoever is ruling the world in the last days is Esau. 
the so-called white man, has more global influence and controls more of the world's resources than any other group of people. Hence, it makes sense that those who trust the book of 2nd Esdras have no trouble believing that Esau is a so-called white man. The only problem is that, just like the books of Jasher, Jubilees, and Enoch, 2nd Esdras is a forgery. For details of this fact, please listen to my teaching entitled, Second Esdras is a forgery. That is, Second Esdras is a forgery. The best way to determine whether Esau is truly the so-called white man is to search the Holy Scriptures, also known as the Old Testament, without the influence of books like Jasher and Second Esdras as these books have already been proven to be fraudulent. Therefore, the rest of this teaching will focus on the Holy Scriptures. Question number two. Can we prove, precept upon precept, that Esau is the so-called white man? I will read from the King James Version of the Christian Bible. Genesis chapter 36 verse 8. Genesis chapter 36 verse 8 says, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So that's explicit. Esau is Edom. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4 says, Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished. But we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them, that's Edom, who is Esau, the border of wickedness. So Esau shall be called the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So we've just seen very clearly that Esau, also known as Edom, is called the border of wickedness because they are a wicked people. Job chapter 9 verse 24. Job chapter 9 verse 24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So we've just learned that Esau is called the border of wickedness and that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It continues, He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Using the precept upon precept method, many Israelites reason that if the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and Esau is called the wicked, then whoever is ruling the earth must be Esau. Again, it is a proven fact that the so-called white man has more global influence and controls more of the world's resources than any other group of people. As such, I completely understand why so many Israelites think that Esau is the so-called white man. Nevertheless, this is still not accurate because Job chapter 9 verse 24 did not originally state that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It is one of the many verses in the Holy Scriptures that was corrupted by the enemies of the Most High. Fortunately, we can consult the Septuagint to discover what Job 9 verse 24 said before Christians got their grubby hands on them. This is because the Septuagint 
dates back to 250 years before the invention of Christianity. So now I will read from the Brenton Septuagint translation. Job chapter 9 verses 23 to 24. Job chapter 9 verses 23 to 24 in the Brenton Septuagint translation reads thus. For the worthless die, but the righteous are laughed to scorn. For they, that is the righteous, are delivered into the hands of the unrighteous man. He covers the faces of the judges of the earth. But if it be not he, who is it? Originally, Job chapter 9 verse 24 did not state that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Job was speaking about how righteous men like himself are laughed to scorn by those who are unrighteous. This translation fits the context of the book of Job. The Christian and Jewish mistranslation is completely divorced from the context of Job's personal suffering. As such, it should be immediately clear that the Christian and Jewish rendering of Job chapter 9 verse 24 is incorrect. In the Septuagint, it is clear that Job chapter 9 verse 24 has nothing to do with Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. They speak about separate, unrelated events. There is no justifiable reason to slap these verses together to try to prove that Esau is the so-called white man. Herein lies the danger of the precept upon precept method of interpreting the scriptures. Anyone can slap any verses together to create any doctrine they please out of thin air. When context is disregarded, expect to be deceived. To learn more about the dangers of this method, please listen to my teaching entitled How Not to Study the Bible. The precept upon precept deception. That is how not to study the Bible. The precept upon precept deception. Esau is first introduced in Genesis chapter 25. And that is the origin of most of the proof texts that many Israelites use to claim that Esau is a so-called white man. First, I will list the claims made by some Israelites, then I will explore Genesis chapter 25 to show that they are false. The false claims about Esau are 1. Esau is the so-called white man because the blood shows through his skin. 2. Esau is the so-called white man because he likes to hunt. And 3. Esau is the so-called white man because he loves to eat bloody meat. False claim number one. Esau is the so-called white man because the blood shows through his skin. Let's look at Genesis chapter 25 verses 24 to 25. That's Genesis chapter 25 verses 24 to 25 and it reads thus. And the days were fulfilled that she should be delivered, and she had twins in her womb. This is speaking about our foremother, Rebecca, Isaac's wife. And the first came out red, hairy all over like a skin, and she called his name Esau. This scripture says nothing about the blood showing to Esau's skin. It says that Esau came out red, hairy, all over, like a skin. 
In other words, the red hair that covered Issa's body looked like a skin. That is animal skin or fur. This is why some translations say like a hairy garment. Animal skin or fur was used to make garments and Esau was so hairy that his body looked like he was wearing a hairy garment. Jacob and Esau were so-called black men who were born on the landmass that is now called Africa. The only difference is that Esau's skin was covered with red hair. This is why after Genesis chapter 25 verse 25, there is no mention of Esau's color. Yet there is further mention of his hair. The hair is what is important. It just happened to be red. The word Esau literally means hairy. In thinkbabynames.com, it says this under the entry for Esau, and I quote, It is of Hebrew origin, and the meaning of Esau is hairy. Jacob's twin brother was so hairy that his parents named him Esau, which means hairy. It was the hair that covered his body that was red. That's why he was called Esau or hairy instead of being called red skin. There is no evidence in the Holy Scriptures to support the false claim that Esau's blood showed to his skin. Furthermore, Esau took wives from what is now known as the African continent and his sons did the same. This means that even if Esau was a so-called white man, his descendants would have been fully melanated within a few generations. This would make the Edomites, that is the children of Esau, so-called black people, not so-called white people. False claim number two. Esau is a so-called white man because he likes to hunt. Genesis chapter 25 verses 26 to 27. Genesis chapter 25 verses 26 to 27 says, And after this came forth his brother, and his hand took hold of the heel of Esau, and she called his name Jacob. And Isaac was sixty years old when Rebekah bore them. And the lads grew, and Esau was a man skilled in hunting dwelling in the country, and Jacob a simple man dwelling in a house. The so-called white man is not the only one that loves to hunt. There are many so-called black people on the African continent that love to hunt. Furthermore, this verse is not a prophecy that Esau's descendants would love to hunt. It simply says that Esau himself was a skilled hunter. Therefore, we cannot honestly use this verse to identify the children of Esau today. False claim number three. Esau is a so-called white man because he loves to eat bloody meat. Genesis chapter 25, I will read verses 28 to 30 and verse 34. That's Genesis chapter 25 verses 28 to 30 and verse 34. It says, And Isaac loved Esau because his venison was his food, but Rebekah loved Jacob, and Jacob cooked pottage, and Esau came from the plain fainting. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me taste of that red pottage because I am fainting. Therefore, his name was called Edom.
Just like many Israelites imagine that Genesis chapter 25 says that the blood showed through Esau's skin, many of them also assume that the pottage was red because it was full of bloody meat. They claim that the so-called white man loves to eat bloody meat, so he must be Esau. Nevertheless, verse 34 tells us why the pottage was red, and it had nothing to do with bloody meat. It says, And Jacob gave bread to Esau, and pottage of lentils, of lentils, of lentils, and he ate and drank, and he arose and departed. So Esau slighted his birthright. The pottage was red because of the red lentils. It's really that simple. Even when shown this evidence directly from the text, some Israelites continue to insist that Jacob gave Esau bloody meat to eat. This is because those persons have no interest in what the Holy Scriptures actually say. I pray that it is now clear to genuine truth seekers that Genesis chapter 25 does not teach that Esau is the so-called white man. Question number three. What is the quickest way to prove that Esau is not the so-called white man? Deuteronomy chapter 28 tells us something about the so-called white man that proves that he cannot be Esau. So I will read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36 and verses 49 to 50. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36 and verses 49 to 50. The Lord carry away thee and thy princes, whom thou shalt set over thee, to a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers know. And thou shalt there serve other gods, wood and stone. This is a curse that was pronounced over the Israelites. For if we were to break the covenant of the Most High God, and because our forefathers broke the covenant, by not keeping his commandments, he sent a nation which neither they nor their fathers knew, and this nation took them away into captivity. This nation is a nation of the so-called white man. Esau was the brother of our father Jacob. He was the son of our father Isaac. This means that our fathers Isaac and Jacob knew Esau. Afterwards, the children of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, had regular dealings with the children of Esau. This means that our fathers knew the children of Esau. So this verse cannot be talking about the children of Esau. Most Hebrew Israelites believe that Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 36 was fulfilled when the so-called white man kidnapped and enslaved our forefathers by the shiploads. This is the nation that our fathers did not know. To reiterate, we can be sure that the so-called white man is not Esau because our fathers knew Esau. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring upon thee a nation from the extremity of the earth, like the swift flying of an eagle, a nation whose voice thou shalt not understand, a nation bold in countenance, that means prideful, which shall not respect the person of the aged and shall not pity the young. We all know that this is talking about the so-called white man who came from the other side of the earth like a swift 
eager and took our fathers into captivity. We all know that our fathers did not understand the voice or tongue or language of the so-called white man who in his pride destroyed our people. So it is clear that Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49 is talking about the so-called white man that our fathers did not know. Yet our fathers knew Esau. Therefore, Esau is not the so-called white man. With respect to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49, the Jameson Fawcett Brown Bible Commentary, which is a Christian Bible commentary, says the following, and I quote, The soldiers of the invading army were taken from France, Spain, and Britain, then considered the end of the earth. This is confirming that Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49 is talking about the so-called white man. Our fathers did not know the so-called white man and they certainly did not understand the languages he spoke such as French, Spanish and English. On the other hand, our fathers knew the children of Esau because they lived on the same landmass, had regular dealings with one another, and spoke the same language. At this point, someone is bound to say, but what about the book of Obadiah? Doesn't it prove that Esau is the so-called white man? No, it doesn't. In fact, it proves the complete opposite. It contains undeniable evidence that our fathers knew the children of Esau. This means that the children of Esau could not possibly be the nation that our fathers did not know. Let's turn to the book of Obadiah and I will read verses 8 to 14. So this is Obadiah verses 8 to 14 and it reads thus. In that day, says the Lord, I will destroy the wise men out of Idumea and understanding out of the mount of Esau. So we're talking about Esau. Verse 9. And thy warriors from Thaman shall be dismayed to the end that man may be cut off from the mount of Esau because of the slaughter and the sin committed against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So the children of Esau slaughtered the children of Jacob, which are the children of Israel, and they committed sin against our fathers. This means that our fathers knew them. Verse 11. From the day that thou stoodest in opposition to him. They stood in opposition to us because they knew us and they hated us. In the days when foreigners were taking captive his forces. And strangers entered into his gates. The children of Esau are not strangers to the children of Israel. We are brothers. We know one another. It continues and cast lots on Jerusalem, thou also was as one of them, and thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, thy brother, thy brother. The children of Esau are our brother. Again, and thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day of strangers. That's when strangers came, foreigners came and took us away. Nor shouldest thou have rejoiced against the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have boasted in the day of their affliction. Neither shouldest thou have gone into the gates of the people in the day of their troubles. If the children of Esau came into our gates, that's evidence that we knew who they were. 
they knew who we were. They could not be the nation that our fathers did not know. Nor yet shouldest thou have looked upon their gathering in the day of their destruction, nor shouldest thou have attacked their host in the day of their perishing. The children of Esau attacked the children of Israel when we were being destroyed and taken into captivity by strangers, foreigners. Again, this is evidence that our fathers knew the children of Esau. Verse 14. Neither shouldest thou have stood at the opening of their passages to destroy utterly those of them that were escaping. Neither shouldest thou have shut up his fugitives in the day of affliction. The book of Obadiah proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that our fathers, the children of Israel, knew the children of Esau. Therefore, the children of Esau cannot be the nation spoken of in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The so-called white man, also known as the children of Lucifer, is the nation which came from the extremity of the earth to enslave our fathers. Our fathers did not know them, and they certainly did not understand their languages. Therefore, for those who genuinely desire to know the truth about this controversial doctrine, it should be perfectly clear by now that Esau is not the so-called white man. In conclusion, Many Israelites believe that Esau is a so-called white man because they have been deceived by fraudulent books such as Jasher and 2nd Esdras that masquerade as holy scriptures. Others have been deceived by teachers and high priests who use the so-called precept upon precept method to force their false claims onto the Holy Scriptures or Old Testament. A careful examination of the Holy Scriptures makes it clear that it is impossible for Esau to be the so-called white man. Nevertheless, we can rest assured that as it is prophesied in the Holy Scriptures, the children of Lucifer will be annihilated for the evils that they committed and continue to perpetuate against the Most High's chosen people, the children of Israel. And with that I say, Shalom.